Morning all. Lovely morning here at the Wild Atlantic bus and uh, I thought what I would do today was to go and do a bit of fishing. It's, um, it's May and in May the, you have a time called Mayfly time. The Mayfly, uh, as some of you may know, um, rises from the bottom of the lake and rises up through the water, hits the surface of the water, breaks out its wings and flies away. Um, and it's during that time, it's the most, uh, uh, the most uh, dangerous time for the little mayfly because once they, they leave those uh, little rocks of, of the bed in the bottom of the lake and start coming up towards the, the top of the water, they get eaten by trout. The wild brown trout loves them. Uh, they hit the water and sometimes they, they float there for a while as, the, as their wings adapt to, to new life outside of their little cocoon and they fly away. But it's in that time they're also um, in danger of, of, uh, of uh, the mayfly have been, have been eaten. And I suppose uh, us men and us fishermen take advantage of that and um, we go fishing using as bait that very same little mayfly. So anybody that's a bit squeamish and you don't like seeing a little mayfly getting put on a hook, um, that's gonna happen. <laughs> um, you know, I suppose it goes way back to when man came on the planet, the hunter-gatherer in any of us, and, and uh, you know, one has to eat, one has to live, and there's nothing nicer than wild brown trout, let me tell you. Um, uh, we also operate a, a catch and release system so that we go out, we enjoy our day, we catch a trout and we release it back into the water primarily 90% of the time. And it's only if you really want a, a wild, wild brown trout that evening uh, to have on the barbecue or on your fire pit or whatever, will we actually, personally speaking, myself and my brothers do a lot of fishing, but we'll, we'll actually then take the trout and yes, we'll eat it and, and it's very enjoyable. So look, what we're going to do is we're going to head down towards the boat. I'm hoping uh, to meet my brother and my nephew down there today. Now, they may or may not be there. If they are, they'll be joining me and let me give you the experience of what it's like to go mayfly fishing out here on Loch Carib. So follow me down. So we're, we're heading down to the, the lake and to the uh, to the boat and uh, want to go mayfly fishing. Um, it's a sort of a bright a bright day, a bright cloudy day, a little bit of wind, a little bit more wind would be be better but we'll see what it's like when we get out there. So this is the, the main road uh, into Gerard village and the lake is here on my left hand side and uh, We'll be turning down here out on a little peninsula that'll bring us down to hopefully my, my brother and uh, my nephew and maybe even my brother's wife. So John Gay and Owen. Hey! <laughs> a bumpy little road. Anyway, down this little boreen and um, as you can see we, we, we we're right on the lake shore here now and uh, we'll be at the boat shortly. Not too bad. Ah, oh, Jesus, great now, huh? I got a bit delayed. I got a bit delayed. I got, I got delayed. Great day for it. Oh yeah, look, looking forward to it now. Now you have the boat on already. 
That's great. There's another one there. How are you, lads? Uh, well, Rich. Good now. Good, all set now. We're ready for a good day. We we'll get ourselves sorted out here. So, guys, this is my family here. Uh, this is Gay, my brother John, and the nephew back there, Owen. So, we're going to head out on the lake here. There's a nice wind after coming up. It was very calm this morning, not so great, but the conditions are, are improving. Probably a little bit too much sun, but we're going to go out and, and, and see if we can catch any of those nice brown trout. So, follow us out. So the, the engine is running and uh, we're heading off on the lake here. guys we're heading out to an island here behind us uh, called Inchigil. It's a monastic island. Uh, St. Patrick's nephew was buried there and uh, we're going to head out there. There's a lot of good shallows uh, around the island and it's a very good spot to, uh, to get a brown trout so we'll take it from there. So what we decided to do was, was to do a, a quick drift here just before going into the island of Inchi Gill and meeting up with other family members and see how they were getting on with the fishing and then I would be uh, have the picnic and, and back out on the lake again. So we'll be going in now shortly to the island. So we're just arriving on Inchigil Island. Uh, I think I have another brother that may be here. He's been out fishing. So we'll check that out. Uh, I'm going to do a a video someday all about Inchigil Island and the people that lived here. The last person that left here was in 1947. Very interesting history here on the island. So, this is the island of Inchigil. So there we are. So, so this is another brother here. They've been out fishing already and have a picnic and go fishing. And they've just caught one trout. Lots of chat here and all about fishing. the birds singing in the background here. This is a beautiful island. And the old, the old picnic. Oh, mobile phones and inchy gill, it never stops. I'm good. So Owen, you're, you're, uh, you're lighting up a, a, an item there. Would you just tell us what that is here? Uh, yeah, this is what's known as a, a Kelly kettle. So we just place some sticks and a little bit of a fire lighter in the bottom of this 
here and uh, once it gets going there's good heat coming out of it. Here's your kettle and uh, you place this on top. Is that filled with water then? This is filled with water in here. Uh, it's, it's around the, the kind of perimeter of the kettle and in the middle there's there's a gap here to feed more more little twigs and sticks down through the centre of it here. Let's let, let let's have a look at that. So folks you can see what Owen is doing there. The fire is coming up the middle of the the kettle and the water is obviously surrounding all that so there'll be a nice cup of tea now shortly. So that tea now on that that's ready now and you've put the few tea bags in and you just take her like this. Now folks there's the Kelly kettle working and there's your boiling hot water. Ah you can't beat a cup of tea on Inchigill Island. Big tea. That's the job. Just launch it. So guys, I'm here with another brother of mine, this is Arthur, and uh, we're, as I said, we've just landed on Inchigill Island, and himself and another brother, Philip, they, they were out here ahead of us. So Arthur, tell us something Hi about there. Hi, mayfly yeah, fishing. Okay, so we're down now for the Mayfly Festival, which is a huge event, and a huge, probably the major, major um, or main, I should say, uh, angling event on the Carob every year, and it's a huge festival and people come from everywhere and um, historically people will be coming from all over the world to Loch Harrow at this time of the year to fish the mayfly and whether it's stapping which is a, a very old method of, of fishing a fly uh, particularly here in Ireland and also in Scotland uh, and of course you have all the uh, fly fishermen there with wet, wet fly fishing and dry fly fishing at this time of the year which can be very very good very good. And Art if, 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 I, if I was to ask you about the life of the mayfly and, and the mayfly uh, okay, so comes the up from the bottom of the shore is that So typically the, the mayfly are hatching now um, they, 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 they come up they, from, they, from the bottom of the lake they, when the nymph comes up that, that changes from a nymph to a, a, what we call a fly, a, a, a sub amigo, which is a, an immature fly, a dun, what we call a, a, a green dun. That fly then gets off the water if it's lucky and it goes into the bushes and it goes through another change uh, into the adult fly. So it changes from the dun into an, uh, an amigo, which now, is the adult fly. So, it, so, so it's extraordinary. It goes from a nymph to a dun. Now would that be would that be on the bottom of the lake? Would it, no, is that how it, so it goes from an egg? It goes from an from egg. From the egg. To a nymph. Yes. It then stays on the lake, the bottom of the lake for at least a year. Yes. And then uh, once the it gets to this time of the year, the, the, the nymph starts going up and down, up and down, up and down, and eventually then it comes up and it breaks into it actually hatches out into a dun. Uh, on the water, on uh, the top on of the, the surface of the water, water the top of the surface the of the water. water. And it's now called an it's a sub amigo. It's actually it's not able uh, uh, to reproduce at this stage, it's a sub amigo. So it's it's it, it's not a fully it's not a fully mature fly. Much. And that fly then takes off the water and goes into the bushes. And that fly then transforms again into an adult fly. There we go, it's guys. So that's the story behind the mayfly. And, then and the Arthur, of course, the mayfly would be a great threat because the brown trout, <laughs> uh, brown the, 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 the feeding, uh, the feeding. Uh, it, 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 uh, brown trout and me. <laughs> Arthur, out, Arthur's a mayfly all morning. Yeah. So we don't help, I suppose, in some ways. Uh, we're, we're connecting the mayfly to go dapping, of course, and, and dapping. Uh, you're, you're, you're actually dapping the, the real fly as opposed to an artificial fly. And of course it's more effective than wet fly fishing in my opinion, or dry fly fishing. Very good. More fa and you get bigger fish on the dap. So there so we are guys, so that's, 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 that's a bit of the story behind the mayfly and what goes on here. So yes, the fishermen, the, you know, we, we go out there and we, we use this little fly obviously to catch the brown trout, but relatively speaking, the amount of fly that gets eaten by the trout, just even just as Arthur was explaining to you, coming up from the surface they're fed on, when they hit the surface they're at risk again, they're eaten there. And, and so, uh, yeah, but I suppose it's back to the, the hunter-gatherer, you know, man, men have been fishing since, since 
time immemorial. Well, you know, there's just one important point that I'd like to say, and, and, and that is to do, it, 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 it's an amazing uh, place, Loch Corrib, one of the biggest lakes in, in the British Isles. And there's huge angling, there's a huge amount of angling, which is wonderful, of course, and wonderful for the local economy, but there's huge angling pressure. And, and the lake wouldn't be quite the same now as it was 30 or 40 years ago. And so we ask people uh, not to kill every single fish they can. I think Arthur's going to talk to you about the catch and release oh, that I've mentioned to you before. So really, you know, we, people should only kill, you know, one or two. If they want a couple of fish for the table, that's great. But after that, they really should release, release fish back into the water. That's brilliant. There's no point in killing every fish you catch. Arthur. Thank you very much for that. Guys, we're going we're gonna to have a bit of a picnic very now. Welcome. And then we're going to head out on the lake and see can we get one of those bound trout. yourselves over to Loch Harrell. So, <laughs> stick with us. So this is the mayfly on Owen's hand. He, he just landed there. And uh, what she will do now is, is fly back out onto the lake and lay her eggs. They'll go down to the bottom and the whole cycle starts all over again. And the fish, and the fishermen love <laughs> using the mayflies. A lot of them get eaten. And that's it guys. Oh, that's my nephew. And uh, he's heading out. And you'll notice that these boats are, are uh, clinker built. So they're timber boats. And he's heading out now to do another little bit of fishing. And I think we should get out there ourselves and join him. So let's do that. So we're leaving Inchigil Island and heading out to do that bit of fishing. So this is the tapping rod that I told you about. Uh, which is really just a long pole and the line at the end of it. And at the end of that, then you have your hook and your, your mayfly. And the boat just drifts along. So here you can actually see my sister-in-law Gay, she's actually in a brown trout, so the trout has now taken the fly and naturally um, is trying to get off. And my brother John is, is getting the net ready. Now the procedure is that you can see the boat is drifting down on top of the trout and you need to keep strain on the fish all the time. So the idea, he just jumped out of the water there, you may have seen that at the top of the boat there. And the idea is now to, to bring the trout to the back. As you can see, Gay now is bringing the rod around the back so that the boat is not floating down on top of the trout, that you keep this strain on the, on, on, on the trout. Otherwise, he may get off. You see him trying to get off. And the net going in the water. And that's our little brown trout. Another little brown trout. And this little guy did get released back into the water. So no fear there. So guys, that was a little bit of excitement. Uh, luckily we had our little drone and we were able to get that little bit of footage of a, a brown trout being caught on Loch Carob during the Mayfly time. And of course, as uh, my brother Arthur told you already, we, we operate very much a catch and release 
system where you know you do catch this trout and, and unless you really want a nice brown trout to eat put it on the barbecue or on the grill then obviously yes you'll, you'll, you'll take that trout and you will eat it uh, other than that it, it's catch and release so there we go well done Gay so You'll notice there that my brother John is fly fishing. So this is that's a fly rod. Um, that's what he's using with artificial flies on the end of the line there. So my nephew Owen has just caught a, a nice brown trout here. Here's the little trout in the water. Now, he's very small. And we call those that size of a, of a little trout. You see him there, folks? That's a sprat. It's a small, small little trout. And he'll be going straight back. Whoops. He'll be going straight back into the, into the lake. And there, there he is. And then Owen will take the hook out. Little trout. Hook coming out as quick as we can, hopefully. And there it is. And oh, no, just put him back in the water. There he is. Give him a second just to recover from the shock. And off he goes. That's it, guys. Oh, you've uh, that's the little brown trout back to live another day. That's it. So my brother John has just caught a, another little trout. I think this fella is going to be, and this is on the fly rod. I don't know whether the camera, you can see that. Um, but you get an awful lot more, a lot more sport on the fly rod because the, the fly rod is much lighter. And uh, there, there's our little trout again. And, and there he is. Another little brownie, another little another little sprat. Well done, John. So we're just heading off now here again. We're leaving Inchigil here behind us. So as we leave Inchigil behind us, we head back to the Glan Shore, which would be a part of the Glan Road. Look, there are up to a place called Doom. So we're coming near the end of our our day's fishing here. As you've seen, we've uh, caught a few nice little brown trout. And we're just coming down along here, fly fishing and dapping the, the little mayfly just down along this point here. You might be able to see that the, the gulls in the distance there are, are feeding away. They'd be picking mayfly and spent gnats is the mayfly that's spent at the end. Picking them off the water, it's a good sign. So uh, maybe this is a, a good point to say thanks for tuning in today and Hope you enjoyed uh, the mayfly fishing with us all and we'll talk to you again very soon so it's a uh, goodbye from myself 
my brother John, my sister-in-law Gay, and my nephew Owen. And I'll speak to you all again soon. Take care of yourselves, look after one another. Bye for now.